hello guys today we'll discuss different kind of keys and we'll see what is the use of these keys in database so we'll discuss regarding the primary key candidate key foreign key super key and surrogate key so before we discuss about these keys let's take one small example for a student table and through that we'll try to understand so let's say for example in this i have taken a student name student marks student department right so these are our columns or attributes i have student x it has 80 marks department is computer science i have another student who has 80 marks he has department mathematics another student i have x who has 80 marks he is part of the computer science department and this is our record or so once we store any value in the database our objective is that to uniquely identify that particular record so that will help us in our business use case so in this example if i want to bring the student x detail then i have two two record with a similar kind of i have x and then at and cs and x at and cs so i am not able to identify or we are not able to identify exact record from this table so then whole purpose of database gone so let's let's deep dive let's i i i add student course here okay. and this is c1 course this is c2 this is c3 if you add this additional column so in this case now we can identify the record uniquely so i have student x with the 80 mark computer science but course is a different c3 right so that is the that is the power of the key so key is something which will help us to uniquely identify the record. So let's understand these key one by one and then we'll discuss more. We'll start from the primary key. If we take this employee table which we have given. So we have employee ID, employee social security number, employee first name, employee last name, employee phone number, date of birth, employee salary, employee department ID. Suppose. So if you look this carefully, so there is a possibility we are looking for the primary key. So first we have to understand what is the primary key. Primary key which can uniquely identify the record and which is, which is very stable in nature. And there is no null value allowed on that key. So in this case, if you think EID, SSN, phone number, these are very likely candidate for the primary key. So candidate key basically is something which can become a primary key. So in this example, EID, SSN, and employee phone number, we think is which are uniquely identifying and which, which are not in duplicate in nature, and there is no null value on that. These are the possible primary key. So our uh, like we give verdict. Let's say in this case, right, employee ID we can select as a primary key. So primary key is something that's where we told us which are very stable in nature and which uniquely identify the record, and there is no null value. So simplicity, we can select EID as a primary key in this example, right? And if you go to primary key attribute, so that's where we are talking. No duplicate values are allowed here. This has the unique value, no null value. It's a mandatory value basically. Only one primary key per table. They have multiple columns. No new row can have inserted with the already existing primary key. If you are following these constants, so this is the primary key. So I hope that candidate key and primary key you got the clarity. Candidate key is something which have the capability to become a primary key. So let's talk about the foreign key. So in this example, we have two uh, table. One is the employee, other is the department. So already we talked about employee ID is primary key for us in the employee. So let's talk about the department table. So we have department ID, 
department and employee id so the key which is in primary key in one table this is the primary key right another table the same key you can say foreign key and why we use the foreign key let's say for example i want to look chapel his department i want to understand which department he belongs so that means the information of the loop chapel is in another table department we have to join so if you want to join so we, we need to create kind of relationship if you set up that relationship with the help of primary key foreign key then we can join and we can write a join condition simple join condition through that we can get his department id that is the use of the foreign key but one thing also make sure that in foreign key constant right let's say for example i have department uh, employee id 101234105106 if tomorrow i want to insert let's say 11718 it will not accept because this is not part of the employee id so make it needs to be very clear whatever in the employee id primary key that value can be inserted here so that is something we have to understand so i hope the foreign key will help you foreign key is something which are creating a relationship between two table was the same key is in one table is the primary key and another table it treats as a foreign key this is the foreign key now let's talk about the surrogate key so there may be possibility in some of the tables right you cannot identify the record it's not always but there are certain scenario right where where uh, maybe columns are changing in dynamic in nature so internal to organization you want to create a kind of artificial key right or which can which can work as a primary key right so in this in this example let's say for example i want to generate some kind of serial number 1 2 3 4 5 6 right artificial key i want to generate so this artificial key will say as a surrogate key so again surrogate key is not always a primary key what we are saying that okay if there is there is a in this uh, table we don't have any natural key so in that case uh, internal to organization we want to generate a key which can help us to treat as a primary key so then we can we can generate that uniquely for our internal organization if we see the definition surrogate key is a artificial key which aims to uniquely identify each record is called a surrogate key this kind of partial key in dbms is unique because it is created when you don't have any natural primary key they do not have lend any meaning to the data in this table surrogate key in the dbms is usually in integer a surrogate key is value generated right before the record is inserted into the table and we cannot say we will not share this with the public so it, it's internal to the organization surrogate key but but if you see surrogate key will have some disadvantages right so disadvantage means we are adding some uh, indexing so definitely it will add more disk space and more io operation and top of that we don't allow we don't use this for the, any search purpose so these are the some of the downside of the surrogate key but but it is useful to the internal organization if you don't have the natural key so i hope surrogate key you got the clarity now let's talk about the next key which is the super key super key as per definition what we are talking about right any set of column of a database that can uniquely identify all the records of the table known as a super key basically what we are saying consists of candidate key plus potentially some extra fields so this means that some of the super key when we remove all the attribute that are unnecessary for the uniqueness only then it become a primary and candidate key so in this sense all primary candidate key are super key but not all super keys are the primary candidate key again in organization we don't use that much super key right right but but we have to understand this concept of the super key but but few things are very important in the uh, our knowledge so let's discuss about right how to calculate the super keys so we'll 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 talk about with through some examples suppose i have one table the table have attributes a1 a2 and yeah and number of attributes are there right 
so what what we are saying that how much maximum super key possible and we are we are saying that each attribute is a candidate key each attribute each attribute is candidate key in this case how many super key is possible then we have to remember one thing so in this case we'll have to to the power, to power n minus 1 super key is possible let's take this with example and then we'll understand let's say, suppose i have one table and i have a1 attribute i have a2 attribute i have a3 attribute right and suppose i have one candidate key a1 one one candidate key we are talking about right so in this scenario things will change so in this scenario the formula will look like 2 to the power n minus 1 these number of super keys possible so basically what we are saying 2 so we have one uh, we have three attributes minus 1 2 to the power 2 equal to 4 super key right so let's take another example i have candidate key in this scenario i have candidate key a1 a2 a3 so then what will be the super key then 2 n is your 3 3 minus 3 1 right so this is something regarding the super key i hope that you got some clarity on the super key right thank you very much for watching this video thank you